Hi family, welcome back to our devotion time. Today is March 16th and our devotion is more like the master from Luke 7, 13. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for this devotion time together. And Father, we open our hearts to receive, our ears to hear, and our minds to understand that which you would show us today about walking more like Jesus. We thank you, Father, for the opportunities every day you give us to follow in his footsteps. And we thank you, Father, for our Lord Jesus today. We love you, Lord, and give you praise and glory. Father, I ask for your anointing upon me as I speak, and that I would speak from your heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In 1 Corinthians 11.1, 1, the apostle told us to become a carbon copy of him as he was becoming a carbon copy of Christ. But in what way? Should we grow beards, wear robes, and walk in sandals? We obviously cannot imitate Christ in his divine attributes, like his power to still the storms and raise the dead, but we can imitate his resolve to reject the devil's temptations by quoting scripture. Matthew 4, 1 through 11, we can follow his example in showing compassion to those with loathsome illnesses or in desperate straits, Mark 1, 40 and 41. The burden he felt for the lost should be ours as well, as we look across our world with all its needs and woes, Luke 7, 13. We can reflect his joy and loving kindness, John 15, 11. None of this is possible by our own efforts, but as we walk by faith in him each day, the Holy Spirit replicates, duplicates, and reproduces the qualities of Jesus in us and through us. This happens amid the stresses of life, which is why A.W. Tozer said, When I understand that everything happening to me is to make me more Christ-like, it resolves a great deal of anxiety. Today, pray, Lord, make me more like Jesus. Okay, so first of all, when I read this one this morning, <clears throat> my first thought that I wanted to say, and I, I don't usually um, disagree with our brother, but... I hold a certain level of disagreement with one statement he made in this devotion <laughs> that it says where he says that we obviously um, cannot imitate Christ in his divine attributes, like his power to still the storms and raise the dead. Okay. I don't agree fully with that because the Bible tells us that we will raise the dead and there are those who have raised the dead. Okay. So we've, you know, as, as, as a body, as, as a body of Christ, we have seen people raised from the dead. There's documented proofs of this. So I just want to say that I don't fully agree. I get what he's saying. It's not the average thing that happens to the average Christian. However, you know, it does happen and it happens by his power. I do agree with this where he said, none of this is possible by our own efforts because it's fully not possible by our own efforts, but I do believe that the Lord through our faith and through his power does work those miracles in some. <laughs> so I just wanted to say that. Um, now back to the topic of being more like Jesus. Praise God. We're going to go through the scriptures today and we're going to look at some verses that really talk about being more like Jesus and encourage us in that aspect. Okay. So I'm just going to do what I used to always do, and I'm going to comment on the scriptures we look at more so than teach from any notes. I actually wrote out a list of scriptures, and that is, and I'm going to just speak about those passages off the cuff. I'm not even going to be, uh, I don't didn't take any notes today, see, I just wrote the scriptures down. <laughs> so, Okay, so 1 Corinthians, we're going to go over there, and we're going to kind of be all over the New Testament just so you are aware of where we're going to be hanging out. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And we're going to read um, verse 1, which is what he had opened up with. <clears throat> Am I in the right spot? Yes, okay. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. Okay? Okay. So when we are walking in this life and we see people who are good examples of 
what we see the Bible tell us a, a godly Christian should look like. Since we don't have Paul walking right in front of us every day, we have him in the Bible. Of course, we can follow what he we see in him here, but we don't have him in person. So, so I just I just really think it's important that we surround ourselves with men and women of God, depending on, you know, um, if you're a woman, you should be surrounding yourself with friends as much as possible, as much as much as it's possible, surrounding yourself with friends who are going to edify and encourage you to become more Christ like because of their own example. Not just because of things they say or, you know, it, some supernatural, you know, um, what's the word? Uh, I can't think of the word I'm looking for. <laughs> Not hanging out with other Christians just because you feel like they're it's going to rub off on you, okay? But actually watching their lives. What do their lives reflect? Do their lives reflect a godliness? you know, a Christ-like behavior, because you can hang out with Christians and they don't reflect a godly behavior. Amen. We all know people who are Christian, they're born again, but they're still really, you know, young in the Lord and their behavior is not really reflective of Jesus. And those are the people we should be influencing. Amen. But the ones that we need to surround in our inner circle should be people that are going to cause us to grow. Okay. So Paul was one of those people who he said, as I follow Christ, follow me. Okay. He even says that later on in another passage, he says, as you see me following Christ, follow me. If, if, in other words, if he wasn't following the Lord, he didn't want the people to follow him. I've even said that to people when I was, you know, in a really bad state after Alex died. I would tell people about Jesus because I was always ministering. Even when I was not in a good place, I was still, I would still tell the truth of the gospel and I would tell people, but don't, don't follow me right now because I am in a bad place in my life. And, and I would let them know, you know, this is how Jesus is. I'm not, I'm not right right now. And I knew that. And so I never encouraged people to follow me at that time because I knew that I was, I was the one needing to be encouraged myself. But when God would open the opportunity for me to talk about Jesus or the gospel, I couldn't help it. It's just who I am. And so even though I was doing it, honestly, and this is really, this is really being transparent, although I was doing it with a cigarette in my hand because I was still smoking at the time. I went through that little two-year stint where I picked cigarettes back up and, and really tore myself up. Um, I would tell him, you know, obviously don't follow me as I had a cigarette in my hand, but this is what the Bible says. This is how Jesus is. Um, and, you know, I didn't shy away from expressing who Christ was. I just made sure to tell them I'm not in a good place right now in my life. I'm still forgiven. I'm still born again, but I know that I am in a um, backslidden place. And so Paul was saying, imitate him. So we should, I feel like I'm rambling and I apologize. We should look for people who we know, or at least who we perceive, are giving a greater example of Christ that will build us up to give an even greater example of Christ to others that are behind us. Because we're all at different stages, I guess is what I'm trying to say. We're all in different places in our walk with the Lord. And I love when I meet people who I feel like are, are wiser and more advanced in the things of God than I am, because I like to learn from them. Um, you know, I have those of you who I talk with and you are those, some of you are those people who I know are at a higher level in your experience with the Lord than I am. Okay. And you encourage me so much. And I just thank you for that. For your, that's why I always tell you guys, you know, comment, contact me. I, I want to hear from you. You know, there are people who I, I learn from when you guys contact me, you teach me and 
I think it's just wonderful. And so we need to be imitators of those who are living their lives Christ-like. Let's go over to um, 1 John. And we're going to go to verse, or chapter 2, verse 6. And that says, Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. So that's a good... Um, that's really like a, a good, what do you want to call it? A scale for us to use, like a measurement. As I see how Jesus walked and I say I'm abiding in him, am I really abiding in him? How much does my walk with God reflect what Jesus' walk reflected? And where am I using him as our standard? Amen. We shouldn't use other human beings as our standard of measurement as far as where we need to be because nobody's going to be perfect. Even though we need to surround ourselves with godly people, no one's going to be perfect. But Jesus, he is the perfect example. So he should be your standard of measurement. And when you're walking with him and you say you abide in him, he's the one to look at and say, okay, Here's my measuring rod and here's Jesus up here at the top. He was the ultimate example. And, and where am I on that scale? You know, that's a good place to look. Um, let's go to 2 Corinthians 3.18. 3.18. It says, And we all with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. So this is this kind of just bounces off what we just talked about. Because what degree, where are we on that scale I was just talking about? You know, Jesus is up here. And here are all people of all different walks of life, you know. And, and where are we? on that scale with him. And so right here, it tells us that we're, we behold the glory of the Lord. And as we spend time with God, as we walk with God, we're going to be transformed into his image one degree at a time. So it's a growth process. We talk about transformation a lot out of Romans 12. And, and it's so true. We're being transformed. It's a metamorphosis. We're going from a, you know, a caterpillar to a butterfly. Jesus is the butterfly. He's the ultimate. He's where we want to be. And we're in that, we're somewhere in that process. So don't, I guess the reason I, I brought this one up is because I, I want people, I want all of you to understand it's okay that you're not, you know, there yet. I, I find myself, and, and the reason I'm talking about it is because I find myself, I get caught up once in a while in feeling like, oh, I'm, I'm not where I should be, you know. And I remember Joyce Meyer used to say, and you probably some of you've heard her say it. She even wrote a book um, with the comment in it. But she used to say, and her actually, I think her ministry part of her logo was, I'm not where. Wait, how's it? How's it go? I'm not where. I should be, but I'm not where I used to be or something like that. I'm not where I should be, but I'm not where I used to be. And, you know, she was growing. She knew that day by day, what she was commenting on was that she knew by day by day that she was, you know, growing in the things of God. And so she could look back and say, yeah, but I'm not back there. I, I'm, and, and I fall into that kind of trap where I feel kind of go into my own little um, self-condemnation at times and say, you know, oh, you should be further along or, you know, oh, I can't believe you had a bad day today, you know, and, and then I have to kind of catch myself and say, okay, stop, because, every, you know, you're growing, you're transforming, you're changing. And this scripture just really blesses me because it, it, it gives me that, that realization that I am in a transformation, that I'm being made into his image by de you know from one degree of glory to another we go from glory to glory to glory amen and this comes through the holy spirit who is our lord you know it's just it's just a blessing 
and an encouragement to me. Let's jump over to um, 1 Peter. Let's look at 1 Peter. Oh, I can't seem to pick that up <laughs> for whatever reason. And we're going to read 221. Hmm. Maybe I went too far. I think I did. 1 Peter 221. Oh, no. Okay. Never mind. I was, never mind. I was looking wrong. Um, it says, for to this you have been called. Because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. Amen. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. Okay. So he is our ultimate example, Jesus. He took the suffering. He took the ridicule. You know, we're going to go through times in our life where we're ridiculed, where we're put into a position where our faith is tested and, or where we're questioned about our faith. And we need to be willing to do what Jesus did and be an example and submit to authority, submit to people who we might feel are treating us unfairly. And Jesus, the Lord, our Father God, has got our back. He will defend us against those times when people have harmed us or wronged us. And so we don't have to defend ourselves. We can be like the Lord and just, you know, my husband's a perfect example with his job. So many times things have happened since he's been there that have caused him to want to protect himself or defend himself. And the Lord just keeps telling him, this is not your fight. It's okay. And allow me to confront this for you. You know, so we need to follow Jesus's example and be humble like that. Um, let's go to Ephesians 5, verse 1 and 2. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. So here again, we see be imitators of God. As beloved children, so like we want our kids to follow in our example, you know, God wants us to follow in his example and we need to walk in love. And that's not always easy. We talked about that a little bit a couple days ago, um, or yes, I guess it was yesterday where we were talking about giving to people and giving of our time and our efforts and all that. And that there's times when it's not easy to walk in love toward people. But the Lord tells us to walk in love toward everyone and especially the brethren. And so we need to remember that as we're doing that, as we're extending ourselves and, and growing in that love walk, we are imitating our Father. We're imitating the Lord. And that is such a valuable thing to be doing every day of our lives. I mean, it's not always easy. But it is really, really vital and important. And it's vital to our growth as Christians. Let's go to John 13 through 17. 13 and then verses 13 through 17. Sorry. It says, you call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is no greater, is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. So we can know things and still not do them. Amen. We all know that. And the Lord is telling us, be a servant. Have a servant's heart, humble yourselves, and walk like me. I am your example. If I did this for you, you're no better than me. You're no better than your teacher. You need to do what I have done. And if you understand what I'm telling you, then you better be doing it. <laughs> Amen. Jesus is, he, I always laugh when I read things out of the mouth of Jesus or out of the mouth of our father. 
I, whenever the, the scripture quotes him as what he said directly, I always laugh because, you know, our father does not, God does not mince words. Amen. We so often as Christians mince words. We measure our words and we try to say things just right. But I, I just, I'm just a side note. I just giggle when I read things that the Lord has said because he was so straight to the point. You know, he's like, if you're receiving this, if you're hearing this, then do it. Okay. Don't, don't make excuses. Be a servant. If I've given you this example, then you better do it because I'm the ultimate example and I'm your teacher and you're no better than me. <laughs> so let's go out and have a servant's heart and be humble like the Lord and walk in all these things we're talking about. You know, it all, it all is a summation of his character, of who he was and who we aspire to be like, because we do, we aspire to be like him. Let's go to Galatians and we're going to read out of chapter three. Verse 27, it says, for as many of you as were baptized in Christ have put on Christ. The reason I picked this one was because I wanted to point out that we haven't just, we're not just walking through this life, acting like someone we have literally, when we were baptized into him, we, when we were baptized, we were baptized into him. And we have put him on. Think about that. You wear Jesus. You represent Jesus everywhere you go. Everything you say, everything you do, you are a representative of him. I am a representative of him. We need to be actively aware that the spirit of God lives in our hearts. And that we have put on Christ and we are to walk this life honorably representing him. Amen. Are we each honorably representing Jesus today? That's between you and him. Only you and him can answer that question. Only him and I for myself can answer that question. Amen. Let's go to Romans and this will be our last scripture today. Romans 8, 29. 8.29. Where am I? Where am I here? It says, For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Amen? God has predestined us to be conformed into the image of his Son. And Jesus is the firstborn he is our brother. Amen. It says to be the firstborn among many brothers. Praise God. He was the firstborn. And he is the one that we imitate, we emulate, and we aspire to be like. Let's pray. Heavenly Father. Oh, thank you so, so, so much for giving Jesus his life for ours. We can never thank you enough. Lord Jesus, thank you for being willing to die for us. Today we come before you in, in humble, with humble hearts because Father, each one of us knows if we are walking as well as we could be. Father, I know for myself, I'm not. And I ask that you would help me to continue to grow day by day from one moment of grace to the next that I would be changed into the image of my Savior. And I pray that, Father God, you would help me by surrounding me with brothers and sisters in Christ who are older in Christ than me. And help me to have the humble wisdom and prudence to hear them and to honor them as my brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray, Father, that you would help me not to ever be stubborn, 
but to grow in the things of God and to be more and more like my Savior every day. Father, where I lack and where I am weak, I know you are strong. I thank you, Father, for the opportunity to be like Jesus. Thank you for predestining, predestining me and my sisters and my brothers today. Thank you for calling us. Thank you for surrounding us, for filling us with your precious spirit. We welcome your instruction and your guidance, Holy Spirit. And we give you all praise and all glory today, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you guys. God bless you. I hope that uh, I hope that I wasn't rambling too much. I feel like I was rambling a little bit today, and I'm sorry. Um, been fighting off a cold, so I'm, I'm kind of struggling to feel as good as I could feel as I normally do today. But... The Lord is good, and I will continue to grow stronger and be fine. I love you. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day, and be safe, and go out and imitate the Lord, and I'm going to do the same. Amen. <laughs> I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much. Bye.